We have discovered an abandoned vehicle. It does not match any Imperial records. Well, are there any local databases with a match? Local box data is conflicted. Possible ID includes Warthog, Puma, Bigfoot, Leprechaun, Chupacabra. Enough! It doesn't matter. Haul it to the extraction point. I'll deal with this when I arrive on site. Roger. Welcome back to the Forge of Sagas. In today's video, we're going to be finishing our skirmish level terrain set by building this overgrown jeep, which may or may not look something like a warthog. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we're going to cut out some rectangles from chipboard. Mine measured 3 inches by 4.5 inches, but you can cut yours if you want to have a different scale. This is just what felt right to me. Once I had cut out four of them, I made two different templates. One for the undercarriage and one for the main body of the vehicle. Remember that you have to cut each of the templates out twice because we're going to stack them together in the next step. Once you have both pieces cut out, you're going to attach some side pieces, which I cut to just a little bit over a half an inch. This is because I was using a half an inch thick block of foam and I wanted it to fit nicely between the two spaces. But again, size it to whatever you need to for the piece of foam that you're going to be cutting. Once the glue has dried, we're going to start cutting out our shape. Here I'm using my hot wire table and you can see the mold is really helping me just slice out only what I need but you could achieve the same effect using a knife or a handheld hot wire cutter. You're going to want to cut two sections of the body and one section of the undercarriage. If you are using a hot wire tool, remember that this will create fumes, so make sure you're working in a well-ventilated environment and that you're wearing a proper respiratory protection. We're going to take one of the top sections and cut away this middle part. This is going to give us the pieces that are going to shape the hood and the small bed of the warthog. To get the angles I wanted for the hood, I used the most extreme angle I could get out of my hot wire cutter, pushing just along the edge to create those iconic hard edges we see in sci-fi vehicles. One thing to be aware of when you're cutting if you're using a hot wire table is that the point where the cut is starting may not actually be the line indicated by the machine. So make sure that you're on point when you're pushing through, and careful not to burn yourself with the wire like I just did there. If you have any imperfections where the hot wire bit into the foam or somewhere where your knife might have snagged, you can always come in with a little bit of sandpaper and sand it flat. This will remove any of those imperfections and give you a nice, clean surface. For my first prototype build, I got a little bit angle happy and cut a lot of angles into everything. and. Not only did it not look good when I started to assemble it, I also realized that this was going to be way too thick for what I wanted. But you know that happens sometimes. You come across a build, you think this is going great, and then you start to assemble it and you're like, oh, well, no, this isn't what I had in mind. So I cut out some new foam squares and tried again. To help slim things down, I took the middle piece of foam for the body and cut off one eighth of an inch. I also discovered that I could cut much steeper angles if I used my hot wire cutter as a vertical cutting tool rather than the way I used it in the first section as a horizontal cutting tool. The last thing to cut was the outside walls for the bed of the truck. I did this by taking that section that I would cut the angles into and cutting straight lines across all of the angled cuts. We can then take the four pieces that we cut from the outside and glue them down on the body of the truck to give us that empty truck bed. Once all the pieces were set, I glued them in place with some tacky glue and let them dry overnight to really harden. After that, I came in with my sandpaper and roughed up some of the edges just to give it a little bit of texture and to smooth out any places where the pieces didn't quite line up. Next, I came in and started adding some thin layers of this foam board. This was to add some of the details that we see in the Warthog, such as that step that lets you get up to where the seats are, as well as just to tone down some of the harsher angles and really bring this piece together where I was using the really thin pieces. I just used my hot glue on the low temperature setting and just teased it all out with my nozzle just to make a nice thin layer of glue, and then I held it down. I had to do a little bit of filling with the glue here or there, and the strings were a real pain, let me tell you. But at the end of the day, it came out looking quite nice. Nice unified piece, 
very coherent lines, definitely starting to have that iconic shape. Next, I came in and added some decorative pieces just to help break up some of the big flat areas. This included a little bit of a step where you could get up onto the larger step, some bumpers, and also adding in some panels for the seating. Now it was time to focus on attaching the wheels. To make the axles, I took some wooden dowel rods and sliced them at an angle in order to create the point that would connect my wheels to the body of our Jeep. Once I had finished cutting them out, I pushed them into the foam in order to create a space that I could securely attach the axle to. I then hot glued all of the axles in place, but I wanted to add a little bit more detail. So I grabbed an old string from my bass guitar and used it to make some suspension coils. Once I'd cut them all to length, I grabbed some needle nose pliers to protect my fingers from getting burned and attached a dab of hot glue to each side before attaching them to the axles. After everything was set, I used some super glue to attach the wheels just to make sure I had a really strong bond. I got these off a random toy car that I bought at the Goodwill, but you know, hey, gotta get them where you can. Last thing to do was to come in and apply a healthy coat of Mod Podge to every piece of foam on the model so that we can get it ready for priming. Now you might have noticed that conspicuous hole in the model. I actively chose to leave that as some battle damage, but you know, if you don't like that, you can make sure that you do cleaner cuts than I do. <laughs> now, what would the Warthog be without its tusks? All these pieces come off the Chaos Rhino upgrade sprue, both these hooks and the casing for the Havoc launcher. Here I cut the hooks off from their mounts, but I'm not going to glue them in place just yet. We have to put in the tow cable first. I started by taking a piece of wooden dowel rod and cutting it so that it would fit between the two ends of the Havoc launcher mount. Once I had it at the right length, I took some florist wire and super glued it onto the end of the wooden dowel and left it to completely dry. Then I tightly wrapped the florist wire around the dowel until I had a nice cable pattern that went all the way down. Make sure you keep pushing the wire together so that it doesn't stretch out on you and super glue it when you get to the other end. Once that's set, you can use some more super glue to attach both the dowel and the hooks to our tow mount. Then you can use some super glue or some hot glue, whichever I think I used hot glue, I don't remember now, and attach it to the body of the vehicle so that we can get this primed. I had a little accident here where the Mod Podge did not protect the foam in the truck bed, but you know, as Bob Ross likes to say, we only have happy little accidents. So to fix this happy little accident, I grabbed some cross stitch mesh and hot glued it in there to form a new floor. With that sorted, I gave the entire model a base coat of burnt umber. This is a painting technique I learned from Eric's Hobby Workshop. I'll link his channel in the description. He does a lot of really great stuff with painting Necromunda terrain, and I wanted to have that aged metal feel when I did this terrain. So next we're going to come in with an overbrush of a gunmetal. This is a heavy dry brush. You know, we're trying to let some of that brown show through, but we still want to give this the majority metallic coverage. To add some more aging, I came back with the burnt umber and just stippled it in a couple of places where I wanted it to be really rusted out. You know, somewhere in that battle damage, a couple of other places here and there. Just making a random pattern until I was happy with how it looked. It was at this point that I had realized that I had forgotten to do the roll cage on the Warthog. So I grabbed some chipboard and cut it at various angles to make all the different components that I would use in my roll cage. However, where it would attach on the front right side of the hood for the battle damage, I skipped that part. With that fixed, I came in with my sculpting tool and began to carve in some of the panel lines that we see on the Warthog. I chose this method because it allowed me to preserve the outline of the model that I had created, and I didn't have to add on a bunch of bulky layers of chipboard or foam that would ruin that silhouette. Next, I grabbed some latex masking fluid and used a sponge brush to apply it. This is going to dry clear and allow us to create a really nice chipping effect later. So just dab it on in a random pattern. If it goes on a little too thick, you can see I definitely did that on the hood. You can come in with your fingers and clean it up. It's not that big a problem. You're going to have to leave it to sit dry for about 35-40 minutes. You know, Let it dry, it'll turn clear, and then we're ready to put some more paint on. As we can see, our masking fluid has dried clear, and now it's time to give it that layer of Halo OD Green. This is an olive drab craft paint. 
Don't need anything fancy. Just give it all a nice coating. Don't worry about, you know, trying to remember where you put the masking fluid. We'll find it soon enough. Once you're happy with your OD green, you're going to come in with a pencil and start to erase your model. The eraser is going to grab on the latex masking fluid and cause this really nice chipping effect. This is one of my favorite ways to do it, and I think it comes out with a really nice effect. I went back and forth on whether I was going to add a base for this piece, but I eventually decided to do so. So I grabbed another piece of chipboard that was roughly the size of the wheel frame, and cut the edges just to give it a little bit more of an organic shape. I started by adding a layer of that same olive drab just to give it a base for the grass. This vehicle has been here for quite a while, so we can safely assume that the grass under it has died due to a lack of sunlight. So I came in with this sandy color because that's the color I've used for some of the ground in various other parts of my Blood Gulch outpost board, and gave it a nice healthy stippling. Once the paint was dry, I came in with some PVA glue, poured it in the center, and then took my sponge brush and spread it out. Then I grabbed some sand and sprinkled it over there to start the flocking process. Then I went around the outside and did the exact same thing, this time using my brown and green flocking material to create the grass. Once everything was dry, I came in with a little bit of super glue on the bottom of each of the wheels and attached them to the base. Next, I gave the entire model a very heavy brown wash. The recipe for this is the one from Black Magic Crafts, which I will link in the video description. It goes on really nice and thick, but it dries to a really nice color. I really like using it on my terrain projects. I felt there was something still missing, and then I realized I hadn't put on the piping at the front. So I grabbed these polystyrene rods and cut them to length with my knife. I then marked off a quarter inch of each end and made a 45 degree angle cut through the edges. This will allow me to attach them together and make my connection points where the bar comes into the Jeep. I attached it all together with super glue and then attached it to the model. Now it's time to actually flock the Jeep itself. This thing would have had plant growth growing over it, especially since Halo takes place in 2552 and Warhammer, where I'm setting this terrain set, is in the 41st millennium. Just a little bit of time has passed. So we're gonna take some more PVA glue and put it absolutely everywhere. Starting from the ground up, I added this green clump foliage to create some bushes around the wheels. I just wedged a lot of it in there and tried to create some slightly different bushes around each of the wheels. Some of them were full, some of them were only on one side or the other, you know, just trying to create a little bit of variety like you would see in nature. For the next layer, I came in with my green and brown flocking and put it absolutely everywhere on the Warthog. This is going to give it that really overgrown feel with a bunch of different types of mosses and lichens and other plant life growing all over it. If you feel that you've gone a little too far, you can always go in with your finger and brush it off because it's just attached with PVA glue. It's not going to hurt anything. So, you know, do it to taste. Go crazy, go not so crazy. It's all up to you. The last bit of flocking I decided to add was this Spanish moss. I wanted this to represent some creeping plants, ivy, and vines that had just grown through and really taken over. I also did this to hide the fact that I didn't really carve any details into the dashboard because I'm good at a lot of things, but that level of detail freehand wasn't really something I wanted to do. So I used this to help cover it up a little bit. The last thing I did was add a layer of matte varnish to really seal in all of our lovely flocking. And with that, we can call this piece of terrain complete. We now have one very overgrown warthog. And with that, we've completed our skirmish level terrain set for Blood Gulch Outpost number one. In the near future, I'll be doing a showcase video where I use all the terrain we've built so far to create a bunch of different battlefields for skirmish level games. I'm really excited about this because Warhammer 40,000 is about to drop new kill team rules and this terrain setup will be perfect for that. We can see there's a lot of structural overlap between what we've built and what comes in the new starter set, albeit much less orky. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video or any of our other exciting kit bashing and terrain building content. In fact, if we can reach 100 subscribers, I will film a narrative kill team battle report so that you all can find out what happens when the Scarab Guardians under Vault Keeper Amat 
first encounter the Dark Mechanicum as both factions seek to secure the Archaeotech hidden at Blood Gulch Outpost number one. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.